Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I'm back again with Drunken Master Paul. And we've got something special for you guys today. As many of you know, I'm a sucker for weird gaming hardware. And recently we were down at the SoCal Gaming Expo, yep. and I was going by the booth for Dusty Games, and I saw this thing. It was this weird piece of hardware that looked like it came out of Space Odyssey or Portal, and I just had to buy it. Well, it's a game controller. I got it working, and we're going to show it off for you today. This is going to be so cool. Let's take a look. So here is the Novent Falcon controller. Now this was created by an American company and it was designed to be one of the first 3D touch devices with haptic feedback for games. Now the idea behind this thing is meant to be something more than just say a rumble feedback that you would get with a traditional controller. Instead with this, they wanted you to physically feel objects and events in games. Originally, this was sold as a bundle for $189 back in 2007. And at the time, it drummed up a lot of excitement because this is coming off the success of the Nintendo Wii and, of course, its motion controls just a year earlier. And as you'll see in this video, some parts of this are pretty dang cool and others eh, maybe could have used a little bit more work. The initial unit shipped with a bunch of different grips so you could choose which one you wanted depending on the game or application that you're using. In this, you see me swapping out the normal one with a limited edition grip there. It's a little bit see-through. And I guess it's probably designed to be more like a mouse because it's rounded and it has buttons on the top there. But they knew a lot of gamers were gonna be playing first person shooters. So you can swap out the normal grip for a pistol grip. And we're gonna show you that working in a game in a bit here. But let's go ahead and start with some demos that come with the unit itself. And then we'll show you some games running later. Okay, this is where it really starts showing off the physics of this thing. So I can move it around. Where the ball is close, I'm gonna grab it. It, it's awesome. I, I'm just barely touching. You can see it trying to move. But it's really, really realistic the way you're feeling this swinging around. So get in here and give this a try. I wanna, yeah, I want to try. Uh, yeah. So do I actually need to do anything? Well, yeah, just basically have it lined up there. You're going to catch it right there. Oh, wow. Yeah, you, you do feel it. Yeah. I know this is video, so uh, you guys can't really feel this, but it, it's amazing. Well, it's very, again, it's 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 not clumsy. It's actually really nuanced. Yeah, it's weighted and smooth. It is. And that's one thing I've noticed about, like, uh, way back in the day, I was uh, on the beta program for the original Microsoft Force Feedback joystick. Hmm. And that was impressive, too, but it didn't have this kind of uh, weight to it, like, all the time. Yeah. It was like things would come back, but it didn't really uh, give that kind of feedback. Awesome. And this is so nuanced. Each one of these demos highlights a different aspect of what this device can do. For instance, in this one, it's a slingshot. You're trying to knock off some cans. And as you pull it back, it gets tighter and tighter until you let go. Well, you got that way faster than I did. <laughs> so this is nuts. So you see your hand? Yeah. So just, just push forward and try to push through it. And then you can, I mean, you can hear, right? Yeah. So, so it, it, the ridges are... It's detecting the ridges. And then when you get off to the edge and you're pushing, it just slides off. I want to try. <laughs> get in there. Oh, yeah. Wow. Just push it's... right in until you touch it. Wow. It feels like bumpy, like for every bump. Yeah. You can feel every single bump on there. Yeah. And it's, since it's spherical, if you get like to the edge and push forward, yeah, it slips off. It slides around. Wow. I mean, it and really knows... from the side. It really knows it's 3D space. Yes. Yeah, so it's a ball of molasses, so push through. Yeah. And then it bogs down. Oh, it'll you're pop right. out the other side. Yeah, and you can go left and right through it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. Try the next one. We continue to check out these demos that were included with this device. As you see here, it's an ice ball. And again, this device knows that it's a 3D object and whether it's solid or not how smooth the surface is, and the motors are so nuanced in it that it's giving you real-time feedback. 
It's unlike anything I've ever tried before. It's actually just amazing to play with. Here's a 3D rubber ball, almost like something you would find in a kid's toy store. But again, the device knows that you can push on it slightly and move it around and it's giving you real time feedback. It's, again, it's, it's such a trip. It's grabbing right up the old ducky bong hole. Yeah, I'm not disturbed, but you know, your, your viewers might be. <laughs> And then we started to check out some of the demos that are more like actual games. But this is where you start to see some of the problems or limitations of this device. I did read one of the things where it's recommended you rest your elbow on something. So my mm. arm is actually getting tired. Oh, missed him. And as you can see here, this is a very simplistic racing game, almost like Road Rash, but it wasn't that much fun to play because the controls were just way too sensitive. Oh! Now, once you hit something, it's really a bitch to get out of it with this thing. But here's an even better example of the controls just really bizarre and not very intuitive. This snowboarding game was hard to figure out because it just didn't seem like it was controlling like you would expect. Something that really surprised us is that there's a ton of Valve games that natively support this thing. We have a couple of websites we went to that still support the uh, the Falcon, and they list a bunch of games that they call gold level games that uh, support this thing. And yeah, Valve's all over it, including Half Life Two Episode Two. So uh, I'm gonna play that a little bit for you. But first, this just doesn't seem right to be playing a shooter. So what you can do with this thing? You pop that little guy out. <laughs> and put in a gun. That's a little better. So let's go into options. Come on, buddy. Takes some getting used to using this as a mouse. And as you can see, here we are. The Falcon is already in there. And you can change the forces and everything uh, in there to whatever you like. We leave the default for now, but you could probably turn this up to the point where it's gonna break your hand Whoa! Okay, that's cool. That's a huge kick when you pull the trigger and you blast something. Boom! Boom, baby! All right. That's nuts to feel that, that kick. As cool as that feedback is, it's at this point when Paul started struggling with the joystick staying calibrated. Wow, can I vomit yet? For whatever reason, you had to keep calibrating it almost every 30 seconds. It's definitely annoying. Okay, that's heavier, that feels good. I just, I'm not convinced yet that this is the way to play. Can I pick this up? All right. Lift. Okay, I can really feel the difference now, that's heavy. The next game you want to check out that supports it is Portal, also by Valve, and also running the Source Engine, and this just seems like it would be a natural for this device. It's pretty natural though, I have to say, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's responsive, like, oops, wow, that kick is something else. And what we discovered is that, yes, Portal is a natural for this controller. I think it's because Portal is a slower game and it's also puzzle-based. You do a lot of lifting. I don't know, maybe the drivers are just a little bit better in this game, but I definitely started enjoying this much more. I need to do. Again, it's cool when you fall, because you feel it. Yeah, you feel that bounce on your Yeah. Land. All right, dude, so what do you think of this uh, Novent Falcon. Well, I I love it. I love it to death. I want to love it more for playing games <laughs> though. Um, when it's working, it's incredible. It's a really cool proof of concept. It really is. The the force feedback it gives you is nuanced in a way I've never felt before. Yeah, in games. And, and strong. I mean, it, it's subtle but strong. Oh, it's it's amazing. It'll rip your arm out of your socket if you're yeah. not careful. However. <laughs> <laughs> Two things. One, when I was playing Half-Life, it just it kept losing contact. Yeah. So I don't know if that's because 
uh, we need to use an original Half-Life 2, Episode 2, or if it's a steam engine or what it I is. I have my like, doubts because we also had problems with Portal as well. That's true. It kept it was, losing it. It was better in Portal, but it still was not great, you know? Yeah. And honestly, uh, I'm not sure how much it added to playing the games. The, I mean, that's the, my issue too. The feeling of when you yeah. shot and everything felt great, but actually using it to play the game, it was it was squirrely, and I don't know if it added enough to it. Well, you you mentioned something when you were playing through some of the demos, is that it's just exhausting. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. It, it's it's. It's, You're working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally. It's, a, it's a working good writer. You have to switch back and forth. Otherwise, one arm's going to get really big. I see this being paired with VR and oh my being God. amazing. Oh, yeah. If, so, if it could work properly. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It'd be really interesting in like the manufacturing sector or mm -hmm. in like uh, the medical field. Absolutely. You know, like like a sur surgical simulator for training students or something like that. It'd be really cool, actually. Yeah. Any kind of game where you would have to like put things in places. Yeah. I think a puzzle solving game this would be really good for. Huh. And provided it would stay, yeah. you know, stay calibrated and stay in the game. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an older piece of hardware, so it's tough to find those drivers, yeah. but... Uh, it did work on Windows 10, which really shocked us, actually. <laughs> and it wasn't that difficult to set up, on no, it to get it running. Yeah. So hmm. I, I love it to death, whether it's going to be a, uh, a pretty thing on the shelf or something I'm going to play with more. I don't know. Yeah. But if you guys know of any other games that work with this really, really well, please let us know. Yeah, totally. We'll put some links in the uh, the description on yeah. the sites we went to to learn about this. The games that it supports, which are actually surprisingly quite a few. There were a lot, especially from Valve. Yeah, from Valve. Yeah. But um, I just, I love the look of it. I love the feel of it. And I'm super glad I got it. <laughs> it's so cool. I know when you picked it up, I was like, wow, that's, that's, that's going to make a great video. <laughs> All right, dude. So where can people find you on the internet? You can find me on YouTube, of course, at YouTube uh, slash Drunken Master Paul and also on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Drunken Master Paul and then on Twitter um, just lurking about in the filing closet really they kept me locked there for about three weeks <laughs> okay <laughs> alright guys thank you very much for watching thank you for subscribing and take care